Today we're going to be servicing a defensive beehive, but before we do that, we just need to make sure we have a few things. So firstly, a high quality bee suit. So I'm wearing the Oz Armour ventilator suit. It's a link in the description if uh, you'd like to buy one. Uh, also smoking the bees, make sure we smoke them thoroughly. These are African honeybees, so if we don't smoke them, they are very difficult to work with. And also just to make sure that in your vicinity where you're working, there's no people or animals that could get stung. Also make sure you have all the tools and equipment you need. So this hive is a super on. If it needs to be changed out, if it's full, we've got an empty one here. These frames have been uh, spun out on the centrifuge, so they're ready to go on another hive. And for the brood, to make space for the, for the queen to lay, we have some additional clean frames here. Often when you have a defensive colony like this, it's because they, they had really stockpiled a lot of resources. Could also be genetics. I've heard people say, you know, they, they rather just euthanize defensive colonies like this, but why? They, this is how God made them. They are defensive by nature, especially the African honeybee. So we just need to adapt to work with them. Most certainly not going to euthanize bees because they are aggressive or defensive. We just need to learn to work with them and wear better protective equipment. Yeah, so it's always better to open your colony from, from the back, uh, just so you don't have all those returning workers uh, finding at the entrance of their hive, because they can also become really defensive because they haven't been smoked yet. So let's see what the super looks like first. Frames are stuck to the lid. Propolis, so much propolis that the frames have literally stuck to the lid. Look at all that propolis. Yeah, I've got some wax bloom. So it's when it goes really hard and leathery like that, but a bit of pollen there, but oh, quite a bit of honey. Definitely pull the super. There's a link below for a video that uh, explains how we pull supers. Just shows how you remove your whole super and the individual frames. There's some brood in the super over here. That's simply because the, the brood box has become honey bound, so the queen comes up looking for space, she finds some space in the super and starts laying, but uh, very little. If you do end up finding brood in your super, you can either cut it out and put it on a brood frame and move it down, or leave, leave it in the super to hatch. Look at this now. See, then you have this. So they didn't put all the frames in the brood box, so there are some frames there. But now they've built on the super frame and you have one long comb attached to your super frame. What we need to do is now is cut this off and strap it to a brood frame. Okay, so when you've got drone brood like this, just throw it away. It's no use for it. They basically just become parasites of the colony. So just keep your worker brood and cut the drone brood out. Okay, so this is now too big. As you can see, too big for a brood frame. So we're going to have to cut some of it off. There's a lot of young brood up here, which is what we want to keep. I'm going to cut this off just so it fits. So we use elastics just to keep the, the comb on the frame. And the bees actually bond the, the comb to the top bar. And then eventually just chew the elastics off and pull them out the front of the hive. That one we can put back once we've got to the brood. More honey. This box has definitely been left way too long since its last service. So we get asked how often should you service your bees? It depends on your region, depends on the food availability, strength of your colony, whatever. So lots of things. You, you got to just check them fairly regular intervals, I'd say monthly at least, and just monitor, monitor your colony like that. More honey. Okay, what we got here is pollen and more pollen. This will go back in. I'm going to just take these wires off there. Or we'll just clean the bur, bur comb off the sides of your top bar, then it stops, it stops them building the frames together on top. 
to remove it, you can just scrape your half tool along the top, either side, give your top and sides of your top bar clean. Put it aside until we've got these others out. Okay, here's some brood. Okay, see nice cap brood, larvae, more cap brood, and some eggs on the side. That's good, there's a lane queen. It's a butte colony this, and they're defensive. They are normally the strongest and most prolific producers. Another super frame. Brood underneath it. We can actually leave it just like that. Because since there's a lot of brood underneath there, we don't want to lose that brood. Two super frames tied together um, to make like a long frame. Don't do this. It's only going to give you headaches later. So we're going to cut these ones off. Okay, I think we can take this bigger comb and strap it to a brood frame. Make sure you strap it the right way around, otherwise your cells are pointing down instead of up. Okay, one more frame. Okay, this frame is basically honey, but bad build, so we're taking it out. Now we need to see what's on the bottom of the hive. Some top bar stuck to the bottom because of this. I'm trying to use double super frames. Don't do that guys, use proper brood frames. Otherwise it just makes your life really difficult later. And we can start putting back brood frames. The track is clean. Okay, so we want to make space for bees so we don't injure them and we put the frames back. Okay, I'm going to leave spaces between the brood so we can add empty frames because it's really hot so they don't need to cluster on the brood. It's about 32, 33 degrees Celsius. So even though I'm in a vent suit, still sweating, but the vent suit helps a lot. If you live in a hot region, don't play, just get a vent suit. It's a game changer. I get the other armor one because you don't get stung through the bed suit. Oh, this means they're gonna be happy. Not happy now, but they'll be happy with the baseball. That's for sure. Pollen frame. I suppose we can add this one back. So you want to send to your brood because uh, that's where the bees cluster to keep it warm. And on the outside, if you still have pollen or honey frames, you can add them there. So we've got brood. That one. Brood. 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 Okay, we've got one, two, three, four broods. Okay, so we can add clean frames in between here. Because we're in a hot region, we do it all the time. It works excellent. After two, three days, you open up again, you take out these frames. They've already built a big comb like that, and the queen's laid in all of them. So this is what we're going to do now. Okay, clean frame, just a foundation strip, some proper wiring for foundation. Okay, so we've got one, two, three, four broods, and then one, two, three clean frames. And let's just see if we're gonna add any more of these frames back. Yeah, here's, here's another brood that I missed. We can add the fifth brood frame into the box, and just mark it as a brood frame, and then add the fourth clean frame for additional space for the queen to lay, and get as many of these bees out of the way before we add the super back on, and harvest the propolis from the lid. There's a link in the description below on a video on how we uh, bait and trap swarms uh, using all the propolis that we gather from our hives. And then we can mark on the lid just the work that was done today. This colony will be much happier now that they have a clean super and they've got space to build and there's space in the brood box for the queen to lay. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please remember to like and subscribe. Uh, check the link in the description for the bee suit if you need it. There's also a link in the description for the smoker we use. And we'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers.